signature senator is to have a plan for everything except this. No plan has been laid out to explain how a multi-trillion dollar hole in this Medicare for All plan that Senator Warren is putting forward is supposed to get filled in. And I'm tired of hearing, whenever I say these things, oh, it's Republican talking points. You are making Republican talking points right now in this room by coming out for a plan that's going to do that. I think there is a better way that is bold that will cover more people, and it's the one we should get behind. So, what is up, guys? This is Mateo's 2020 Politics here. And I didn't want to just make a video on one of those moments. I want to make a video on both of the moments where Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar went full corporate Democrat mode. So, in different ways, because I, was, I, I keep speaking about how corporate Democrats always say, how are you going to pay for Medicare for all? How are you going to pay for it, huh? How are you going to pay for it? When it's been laid out and explained over and over that the money that's con that's collected from the the top one percent, seventy percent wealth tax will be funding Medicare for all. And it, I don't. It's ridiculous because they keep hearing the explanation. Again, explanation is the seventy percent wealth tax will be taxing the top one percent of Americans, um, even more than they are currently taxing them now. And the taxes that the taxes that they'll get from the top one percent will be funding Medicare for all, and the corporate Democrats keep hearing it. But no matter how many times they hear it, they just keep saying, "How are you going to pay for it?" Um, and I don't know if it's because they are kind of dumb and they don't really understand it, <laughs> or they are just trying to basically manipulate. And because by imagine this, by a person continu continuously saying, "How are you going to pay for it?" It caused the audience to go like, oh yeah, that's right. Elizabeth Warren hasn't laid out how she's going to pay for it. Because, you know, people who judge is asking. So, it's probably one of those. I feel like, personally, with people who judge, we know, it's very, we know he's very manipulative. So, he's probably using that tactic. With Amy Klobuchar, I just don't, I just don't think that she's particularly smart with the whole healthcare um, political issue. So, because... Um, you had Pete Buttigieg, who was like, how are you going to pay for it? And then you had Amy Klobuchar, who said that Medicare for all is a right-wing talking point. Oh, my God. You know, I don't, even, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have to say anything. You guys would still understand. It's one of those videos, or one of those rather um, things I don't even have to explain in my videos. Because how can you say Medicare for all is a right wing talking point? L literally, you could go back. She goes like, and you can't just implement this Republican, you know, agenda. We should have everybody covered, and well, Medicare for all is gonna have everybody covered. Your plan, uh, Amy Klobuchar, does not have everybody covered. You are for private insurance, Obamacare, universal health care, things like that. And Bernie Sanders already laid out how. Hundreds of thousands of people are either going bankrupt, um, living on the streets, because not being able to pay rent, because they can't pay for their health insurance. Now, Medicare for All is free, so there's no way they could go bankrupt because they can't afford their insurance. So, what does she mean by, oh yeah, we need to have everybody covered? If you believe that, then just support Medicare for All. It doesn't make any sense. You see, this is why... I just think that she doesn't understand what's really going on. Because, first of all, you can't call Medicare for all a right-wing talking point. And then you can't go like, that's a right-wing talking point. We need everybody covered. Well, I'm sorry, but private insurance does not have everybody covered. Medicare for all does. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> these, corporate, these corporate Democrats sometimes just go crazy. They just go crazy. Um... And Amy Klobuchar, I found, was much more aggressive this night. And I think because she's always taking this laid-back, polite, manners-maketh-man approach. Um, but now she has she realized, okay, I'm not going anywhere. My campaign has basically plateaued. It was at about 3%. Now it's at about 1%. It's just kind of staying there. I have to become more aggressive. And here's the thing. To corporate Democrats... Um, or perhaps older establishment voters, they may have actually liked her performance, but for millennials, progressives, they wouldn't. They didn't like it. That's because 
You see, we know that, that what she was saying just doesn't make any sense because you can't call Medicare for all right when talking point, and then you can't say that private insurance has everybody covered, you know? And then with the old Pete Buttigieg thing, and I'm, I'm serious, they're going to keep repeating over and over, how are you going to pay for it? How are you going to pay for it? Um, the corporate Democrats will keep repeating that. Pete Buttigieg is trying to become the new Joe Biden. He's laid out, he's basically, he keeps laying out that um, it looks like Joe Biden is going downhill, so maybe I could be the next Joe Biden. And so you can see why lately he's becoming much more centrist. Because you remember back in early 2019, he was seen as a progressive. But now that you know Joe Biden is going down, he sees that he's becoming much more centrist. So literally, and then and then not only that, that that's not the only political calculation he does. The other thing that he does is that he will often just say things that are really, are really relatable, like you see. Uh, my fellow Americans, this is why we don't like Washington, D.C. We don't like it because we're always arguing with each other. And it's, it's just so obvious that he's doing all these things as a political calculation. Every word he says is a political calculation. So, he's a, he's a smart one. He knows what he's doing. Um, with Amy Klobuchar, she just doesn't really know what she's doing. I think that she's just really lost and really believes what she's saying. Um... So, I don't know which one is worse, being honest, I mean, sorry, being a dishonest manipulator, um, which is sound, does it, which does sound kind of harsh, but being a dishonest manipulator, or just being kind of naive. I don't know which one is worse. You guys can decide. I, I personally think that they're equally, um, equally bad. Um, now, as I was in the middle of saying, the corporate Democrats are never going to stop repeating the whole quote of, how are we going to pay for it? And after a while, you've got to think on oh, Mateo. They're going to eventually realize that it's actually, it actually is possible to pay for it. But some of them, like people to judge, will know, but they're going to keep saying it. Um, with, um, with people like uh, John Delaney, Amy Klobuchar, Joe Biden, they'll keep saying it because they actually don't understand it. Um, so I could see why centrists thought Amy Klobuchar had a good night. Nobody's saying Pete Buttigieg had a good night. I personally think he was one of the main losers. He didn't get destroyed, but the whole entire confrontation between him and Tulsi Gabbard kind of... He, he got punched in the face. That's the equivalent. He didn't get beat up. He just got punched in the face and stayed, stayed standing. Um, but even Klobuchar the whole time... Um, and I didn't, I didn't just notice this with her. I noticed it with all the other candidates. Almost everybody on stage just looked angry the whole time. They didn't look happy. They looked angry and really serious. Even Kamala Harris looked way more upset compared, really upset compared to the last debate. Joe Biden was screaming, was screaming his head off. Um, people who judge, you could just sense the vibe from him that he just was not happy. Um, and I think they're all doing this on purpose as a calculation because they see that the progressives are getting popularity by being more aggressive. So they realize they have to be aggressive too. Now, I don't think it's sneaky. I just think it's an interesting, you know, idea because they they might actually gain a bit of, of support from being aggressive because by centrist Democrats, um, centrist Democrats might view um, be more aggressive as being a better debater. So, because again, I just see Amy Klobuchar as being naive, but a centrist Democrat might see her as being kind of strong. Strong is the key word. And so these centrists might actually gain some support after this debate. You know, on the real clear politics average, they might tick up a bit. But uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll make another video tomorrow, although I might not because I just went to Maine really late last night. And I arrived at 7 a.m., so I was sleeping on the bus the whole time. I'm in Maine in somebody else's house. My mom was having many performances, so I don't know if I'll make a video tomorrow. If I don't, then I'll, I'll make two videos the next day. So, see you guys later, and bye.